Anchor your life to the inspiring words that will put a rainbow in your sky. Listen to Word and Songs, a program that will introduce you to the Word of Life and beautiful music to help you experience peace and consolation. Join the Daughters of St. Paul for half an hour of Word and Songs. Peace and blessings, dear friends in Christ. Happy Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul the Apostle. Being a daughter of St. Paul, I'd like to honor our patron saint and father, whose virtues we try to imbibe and imitate in following our Lord Jesus. On January 25, the Church honors and celebrates the momentous conversion of one of the greatest saints, Saul of Tarsus, now known as St. Paul the Apostle. He was a Pharisee. In fact, he was a zealous Pharisee. So, when he heard about the emergence of the followers of the New Way, as what the early Christians were called then, he saw this as a threat to the Jewish religion. So, it was then that he relentlessly persecuted the Christians. The scriptures say he was present while St. Stephen, the first martyr of the church, was being stoned to death. The Acts of the Apostle said, Saul, is still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that, if he should find any men or women who belong to the way, he might bring them to Jerusalem in chains. From the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 1 to 2. On his way to Damascus, he met the Lord. A sudden and bright light from heaven struck him, and he fell to the ground. And he heard the voice of the Lord, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. I'm Sister Lines of the Door of St. Paul, inviting you to join me for half an hour as we look into the significance of the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul and the lessons we can learn from this feast. So, may I now invite your friends to sit back and relax as we allow the Lord to speak to us personally in this program. Meanwhile, may we listen to our first song. All that I counted as gain, now I consider as loss, empty and worthless to and honors will fade, earthly delights disappear, fade like the grass of the Right. 
promise of Christ is the light of the love of the Lord. What more could bring us all than to know the power of His life, of His life? What more could bring us peace than to share in His suffering and death? What more could be our final wish than to Friends, there are several important lessons we can learn from this celebration. First, Jesus identified himself with his followers. Saul was not persecuting Jesus. He was persecuting his followers. But Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Indeed, Jesus has always been true to his promise. I will be with you always until the end of time. That is why, in the midst of life's trials and tribulation, we should take courage from the Lord's assurance. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. And this will also serve as a reminder to all of us in dealing with one another. We should always be conscious of the presence of the Lord among our fellow humans. We treat one another with love and compassion, for as Jesus said, Whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, you do unto me. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to eat. Now enter into the home of my Father. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. When I was homeless, you opened your door. Now enter into the home of my Father. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. When I was weary, you helped me find rest. When I was anxious, you calmed all my fears. Now enter into the home of my Father. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, Second lesson, after that encounter on the road, Saul did not immediately proclaim the gospel. Instead, he went into Arabia and later returned to Damascus to receive instructions and guidance from Ananias. It was only after three years that he began his ministry. In other words, that encounter on the road was just the beginning of a long journey of conversion. Friends, conversion to the Lord is a long process. For Saul, it took him three years of prayer, soul-searching, 
and reflections on God's Word. This equipped him with all the necessary graces to finally embark on the great task of spreading the gospel of Christ. And in the second reading today, with a sense of urgency, he calls us to conversion. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. Though I've never seen you, I know you so well. You've shown me, you've taught me, you've loved me as well. I used to fight you, bring your people down, but in blindness I found you and turned my life around. Your love is not measured in steps or in time. It will not wither or ever lose its shine. It fills me up, helps me carry on. You've given me so much, I'll always sing your song. I've spread your word to many, to the Gentiles and the Jews. I've tried to bring them closer, but they're still so much work to do I've written of your teachings traveled to many lands I've tried hard to live your way and help them understand your love is not measured in steps or in time it will not wither or ever lose me up, helps me carry on. You've given me so much, I'll always sing your song. It fills me up, helps me carry on. You've given me so You're tuning in to Word and Songs, and this is still your friend, Sister Lines of the Darb St. Paul, sharing with you insightful reflection about the significance of St. Paul's conversion. Friends, conversion is just half of the story. St. Paul himself avoided using the word conversion in reference to that encounter with the Lord on the road to Damascus. In his letter to the Galatians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 16, he describes the event not as conversion, but as a moment of his calling, just like the call of the prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah. He used the words chosen, set apart in the womb of his mother, called by God and revealed to him his son so that he might proclaim Jesus to the Gentiles. In short, his conversion is directed towards one purpose, the proclamation of the gospel. It is his mission in response to the Lord's command in the gospel today Go out to the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Saul embarked on this mission. From Saul, he became Paul, acquiring a new name to signify a new mission and direction in life. He is called the Apostle to the Gentiles, and at other times, the Apostle to the nations. For indeed, he went all over the world, spreading the gospel of Christ to all the nations. Go out to the world. Go out to the world, go out to the world and proclaim the good news And know that I am with you, yes, until the end of time As you go out to the world and proclaim the good news As you go
go out to the world and proclaim the good news. As the Father sent me, go out to the world. So am I sending you, go out to the world. With the peace that I leave you, go out to the world. With the joy of the gospel in your heart, go out to the world. Go out to the world, go out to the world and proclaim the good news and know that I am with you, yes, until the end of time. As you go out to the world and proclaim the good news, as you go out to the world and proclaim the good news. You are the salt of the earth. A light unto the nations, go out to the world. A city on a hill, go out to the world. Let the light of your goodness ever shine. Go out to the world, go out to the world. Go out to the world and proclaim the good news. And know that I am with you, yes, until the end of time. As you go out to the world and proclaim the good news, as you go out to the world and proclaim the good news. Friends, the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul reminds us that as Christians, we are essentially missionary. The faith we received is meant to be shared, and the more we share it, the stronger and more vibrant it becomes. In this time when the gospel of life is drowned by the clamor for more blood of the children and the innocent, when telling the truth becomes more of a risk than an advantage, when people are accustomed to easily believe the media filled with commercial and political propaganda rather than the Word of God, this missionary vocation of Christians becomes truly necessary and vital. This is what St. Paul realized when he wrote to the Corinthians, for if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. From 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. If we as Christians do not proclaim the truth of the gospel during this difficult period in our history, woe to us. We ourselves will be victims of the culture of death. Paul was weary on his journey his body frail and weak the apostle knew the end was near as he dipped his pen in ink he wrote timothy my son i have fought the fight of faith carry on what i've begun but most of
redemption to a lost and dying world. Lift your voice unashamed of the gospel of His name until all have heard. Preach the word. 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 Friends, God's call is not for us to merely proclaim His word, but a call to examine past failures, repentance of our sins of omission and commission, reconciliation between ourselves, God, and others, renewal of commitment to the basic gospel values, and restoration of authentic role of God's people in the world. God's work was completed on the cross in His resurrection and ascension, but God wants us to be part of His work and plan. That is why He is calling every man to contribute to His cause. What shall be our response to God's order, go out to all the world and tell the good news? Here I am, Lord, send me. May the conversion of St. Paul and his example of apostolic zeal and courage inspire us to return to God and be active instruments in the spread of the gospel of Jesus, the goodness of life and love in the world. Join me now in prayer. I bless you, Jesus, for the great mercy granted to St. Paul in changing him from a bold persecutor to an ardent apostle of the Church. And you, great saint, obtain for me a heart docile to grace, conversion from my principal defect, and total configuration with Jesus Christ. St. Paul the Apostle, pray for us. At this point, I'd like to acknowledge and thank the source of my sharing, from the Reflections on the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul, published in www.pagadiandiocese.org. Thank you very much for the insightful reflection. The prayer is from the prayers of the Pauline family, composed by Blessed James Alderione. Likewise, a special thanks to all the composers, producers, and artists of the songs we featured in this program, The Love of the Lord by Michael Jonkas. Whatsoever you do, Music and lyrics by Willard Jabus and performed by Chris Brunel. St. Paul's Song, music by John Hales and performed by Nina Corlett MacDonald. Go Out to the World by Richard Coots. Preach the Word, published by Edren Dorego. And The Mission by Jamie Rivera for our final song. Thank you very much. May you continue to inspire the world with your gift of music. And may your music always communicate the love of God to His people. To those of you who follow us in YouTube and Facebook, thank you for listening. Remember, Pauline's Radio PH is linking lives and healing hearts. And if you're searching for spiritual books and media materials that would help enrich your spiritual life, do visit any Pauline's Media Center nearest you or visit our website www.store.paulines.ph. I'm Sister Lines of the Door of St. Paul saying bye-bye for now. Thank you so much for listening. Join me again next week for another episode of Word and Songs. Happy Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul. God bless us all. To deepen our devotion to the cross at any price Let us then be sober, moving only in the spirit As aliens and strangers in a hostile form Message we're proclaiming
Just heard word, word and, and songs. songs. This program was brought to you by the Daughters of Saint Paul.